of my Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox series. We're working on this really cool image today. Uh, girl at the rodeo. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'll link the uh, original image in the description below. That way you can work along with me. Hey, without any further ado, let's get started. We're starting out here in Photoshop. Now I just duplicated the background layer so we can work non-destructively. I'm going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2 and we're going to turn this into a really cool painting. It's not going to be that hard. It's going to be very simple, but let's start out by clicking add filter and we're going to go right to the impression filter. Now, the first thing we need to do is pick a brush. So what I like to do is just click through the different brushes here. And can you see like these little, uh, white flex shooting through here. This is like the canvas sh uh, showing through here. We can get rid of that by coming right down to texture here and changing our background type from uh, solid to the original. Now watch when I click that, see those go right away. So that's pretty cool. So let's come back up here and continue to go through these different brushes and find a brush that we kind of like. And let's see, do we want to look more sketchy? Depends. I think I kind of like this brush right here. Okay, now let's have some fun. We picked our brush here and experiment and you can keep going through and find the brush that you like. And then this next step, number of strokes here. Uh, if you go high, it's going to be, uh, you know, less painterly, medium, a little more painterly and low, a lot more painterly. So on this particular picture I think I want it to have a more painterly look and now let's play with our brush size now we can move this brush size away to the right and you, you can see we can make this painting go real crazy or move it to the left and take a lot of the strokes out so we just have to find a spot where we like the paint to lie and I'm thinking maybe right around here and let's see here let's play with our volume of paint and this just shows you like the paint like showing through there. See that? So we just got to find a volume that we like here. I'm going to think maybe right around here. Now, right now it looks a little bit over the top. So let's, let's jump down to stroke width and stroke length. So this will be the width and the length of the stroke. So let's play with this. What if we were to take the width of the stroke and drag it to the left? See that? It's getting more of that sketchy look. And I'm kind of liking that direction right there. So let's play with this and find a spot that we kind of like. And I'm thinking maybe right around in there. That's looking pretty good. Now let's play with the length. Let's pull the length back. Now we'll move it to the left here. Yeah, see that? Let's find a spot that we like. And I'm thinking maybe right around here. Yeah, see, that's looking a lot better. Now let's go back up. And let's see, did I play with the opacity? No, the opacity. This will show you how the how much paint shows through. See, when I pull this up, gets that real nice painterly look. So I'm going to pull that opacity of the paint up a little bit here. Let's try maybe right about here for now. And is there anything else I want to adjust? I think it's good. I might want to play with the uh, stroke rotation. Let's see, if I take the stroke rotation, watch the paint strokes change directions as I move this. Can you see that? So it can add some nice interest to the image here. And on this, I don't want to go too much. I might just move this a little bit to the right. Maybe, maybe right around there. I think that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with everything. I don't think I'm going to add a uh, canvas texture to this right now. Oh my, I almost forgot. I always like to go to the painting progress slider right here. This is really cool. Watch when I slide this to the left. It takes it through the different, you know, uh, progressions of the actual painting. So you can get some really cool effects just by playing with this. This is a really powerful uh, slider. And I recommend that you play with this on every one of your images because you'll find a spot where it's going to look really, really cool. And for me, I'm thinking it's going to be like right here. I like that. I'm going to leave the progress there. Next up, I'm going to add, um, come to add filter. Let's add a precision contrast filter. If you've watched any of my videos in the past where I do uh, paintings with uh, Topaz Studio 2, I really enjoy the uh, precision contrast filter when I'm working with, with the uh, impression filter because it can really bring out some nice details. 
Let's start out with micro. Let's move the micro to the right. Can you see the paint strokes really start to pop out? Isn't that cool? So let's uh, find a spot we like. Let's do around a 30.30. 30. Let's play with the low. Just, you know, just drag it to the right, drag it to the left. See what you think. Find a spot where it looks good for you. And I'm thinking maybe right here. And let's go to the medium. Let's play with it. And let's find a spot that we like. I'm thinking right here. And high, let's play with the high. These are higher areas of contrast. And I love how it breaks it down into really small micro areas of contrast, low, medium, and high. So high is going to be like, you know, all these long shadows and things like that. Larger areas of contrast. So let's move that to the right. See that? And fi let's find a spot that we like. I don't want to go too crazy with this one, but I want some contrast in the high areas. I think somewhere right around there. And then you can play with the lighting here. You have shadows, midtones, and highlights. I'm not going to touch those right now, but I think I'm going to work with this equalization. This is a really cool um, button here. You know, you have low, medium, and high. So you have three choices. So you can go to high, high equalization, medium, and then you have low. If you want more drama, I think of it this way. I like to call this the uh, drama button. You know, like a lot of drama for low, less drama, medium, and less drama yet on high. So I think I like a little more drama in this image. It's got a lot of tension and, uh, you know, the horse is moving and it's really cool. So I'm going to go with uh, low. So it gives it a little extra drama. Now I'm going to play with the vibrance, give it a little bit more uh, vibrance, which will bring up the saturation in the lower areas of color. So let's, let's bring that up somewhat. Yeah. See, it's bringing some of the blues out in here in the, in the lavender type color on her uh, shirt. So I'm going to find a spot that I like, and I'm thinking maybe right about there. That looks pretty cool. And I love this color contrast. So areas that in the lower contrast areas that have lot, you know, they'll lose some color sometimes when you're working with the uh, precision contrast uh, filter. It'll bring some of those colors back in lower areas of contrast. See this when I pull this up, see these colors start to pop out. Isn't that cool? Now that's way too much. But let me find a spot where it looks kind of nice. I want those little bit of colors popping out in there. But I'm thinking, you know, maybe right around there, like a 0.40. So looking really cool. So if we click this little uh, eye right here, here's the before, the precision contrast, and here's the after. Isn't that cool? Really nice. And if you left click on the canvas here, you can see the before and the after. See where we're coming. Now, what I may want to do next is bring a little bit of detail back on, on her face here and maybe on the horse here. So I'm going to go back to the impression filter and let's get the layer mask here and let's work with this. Let's click on brush and uh, let's adjust our transparency. All right, I'm going to move this transparency to the right, more into the grayer shades. You know, if I move it the whole way to the right, it'll just paint white on white, which will do nothing. So I want different shades of gray in here, the whole way down to black. So I want to bring some detail back on her face here. So let's take this transparency slider and, and make, a, make it a darker shade of gray. Now, I want to take my radius and make it a little smaller, something like that. Now, let's just paint on her face right here and bring back some of the original image, not the whole way through, but, and that's too much, I think. So what I want to do is take it more to the right and keep experimenting here till you find a spot that you like, because we want to maintain that painterly look. But however, we want to, you know, we don't, you know, we want some detail back in there is the best way of saying it. Uh, let's see. And... I'm going to bring this a little bit more to the right and get right around her eye and mouth here. Yeah, I think something like that. Yeah, see, now you can see a little bit of detail in there. And then this, there's a couple little lines right here. I'm going to take this more to the left into the darker tones, make my brush a little smaller and just paint, paint that area right like so, just to clean that up a little bit. Now let's make my brush a little bit bigger. Now the horse's eye right here. Let's start out. We'll experiment with the transparency. Yeah, something like that. We got some paint coming through here. And maybe his nostril in the front of the horse here. Like that. So you bring a little bit of detail. And then let's maybe on, on the stirrup down here on her foot. Let's 
paint a little bit of detail and maybe on our pants right here like that. Maybe add a little more painterly. So if I drag this more to the right and take it more to the lighter side of things, I'm adding more painter, painterly quality back to it like so. Yeah, like that. So I don't want to take all that quality out. Maybe on the on the horse's hoofs down here, let's bring a little bit of that detail back in there. Yeah, just like so in there. Yeah, I like that. And, you know, so now we got a little bit more detail on her face, on the horse here, but we're still maintaining a very nice uh, painterly type quality to the image. Now, I'm really enjoying this so far. We've come from here and we've gone to here. I really like this quality, but I'm thinking, what about a little bit more contrast? Okay, so let's add. Nobody says we can't add another precision contrast filter. So let's go ahead and do that. And let's play around. Let's play with the micro. See that? Isn't that cool? It's just adding a little bit more drama to the image somewhere around there. And how about the low? Let's play with that one. Yeah, the low. Let's get it up to maybe somewhere around here. And let's try the medium. Yeah, I don't want to go too crazy with the medium, but maybe, I don't know. Maybe somewhere right around in there. Now, that looks really good. Now, the only thing I think I might do is uh, get a um, mask and mask it off her face a little bit. But let's play with the equalization real quick. So here's low, here's medium, and here's high. And, okay, I think I might leave it on high because now that I've added that extra contrast, I don't want it too much drama in there because it already looks very dramatic right so let's go ahead and get a uh, layer mask here and just get our brush and I'm going to keep it the whole way in black and let me just take it off make my brush a little bit smaller here and by the way the whole time I've been using layer mask I, I just use the default settings of the edge aware on and the softness it defaulted at 0.50 so let's just take it off her face now that might be a little too much. Let's drag it to the right a little bit, make it a little more on the gray side and add a little bit of that uh, contrast back in. Yeah, just to make sure everything works well together. Okay, at this point, I think we're done for now. It doesn't mean we have to be done with our edit, but I mean, for the for the impressionistic uh, part of this image, turning it into a painting, I think it's done. I'm not saying I wouldn't do more, but it's pretty close to completion. So if we're... If we're happy with everything, now we've come from here and went to here. I really like it. So if you started out in Topaz Studio 2, which you could have, all you have to do is come up here to File and click Save Project as, give it a name and save it. In our case, I started out in Photoshop, so I'll just come up here where it says Accept and click this. That'll send us back into Photoshop. And then we could come over here. See where it says Studio 2. That's what I named that layer. Here's the before and here's the after. So there it is. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. I just threw a little digital frame around it from uh, Topaz Studio 2 just to you know, to add to the effect of the painting. Hey, if you enjoyed this tutorial today, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly.